Hello, Zero K fans. Welcome to Nanolids at Dawn. This is Shadow Fury 333 with an exhibition match to try to see how Exploit is doing. Exploit has been practicing a great deal for the last, I don't know how long, years at least. And their LO actually seems to be increasing, so I'm assuming they're starting to do pretty well. I want to see how they're doing. I haven't, I have not cast a game with Exploit in, I don't even know how long. But they've been practicing hard. I want to see what they're up to. So let's go see what they're up to. They're starting in the southwest corner of the map. Their opponent, 400, starting in the northeast corner of the map with shield bots. This is on Ravaged. Ravaged feet. Well, Ravaged is a map that I'm sure anyone who's watched this any length of time would recognize. Or if you played StarCraft 2, of course, I mentioned that before. It is Zelnaga Caverns, but it is in 0k called Ravaged and very defensive at the start. And we see that 400 is. Not, well, I thought they were taking advantage of that with the dirtbags, but no. However, the dirtbags do jump, which means the cliffs aren't a problem. Exploit, on the other hand, taking advantage of this being a map that helps jump bots going straight for those pyros, because that is exactly what you need to do. Or at least, it's a useful thing you can do. Because this map does have the cliffs it does, you can use both pyros, well, jump bots in general, and spiders to great effect. However, that, I mean, the thing is, Spiders more so than jump bots, you kind of have to actually make use of that. Jump bots have a lot of really good straightforward units. Spiders, they do have good straightforward units, but they gain... I find they gain a lot more strength from the cliffs than jump bots do. Like, jump bots have a much more viable game plan on flat maps, or at least an easier game plan to do straightforwardly on flat maps than, I, than spiders do. Like spiders, it's you do have stuff if, you, if you're kind of clever with the way your venoms right back, pairs work, you're, very, you're scouting the fleas and all that. It just feels a lot easier if you have the hills to go with it. Jump bots, on the other hand, you can just go forward with pyros into moderator, into firewalker, placeholder. It's even on a flat map, I've seen it work really well. Anyway, 400 setting up with very nice juicy power plants. These are going to be basically the first point of call or first point of call for exploits pyro. That's what they're going to take take care of at the start. Exploit, on the other hand, going very paranoid. Now. This kind of makes sense because wind generators are fairly weak and 400 has their wind gens effectively in a defensive position. They're kind of setting up so that I guess if something does come in, it would hit this first. But it, those wind generators don't burn down. One of them might. But yeah, that was actually kind of lucky. Exploit did not respond in time to actually deal with the wind generators because that would have been devastating. Okay, one does go down, but still. That could have been all of them in a hurry. So 400 had a really nice defensive setup, at least as far as one pyro is concerned. Two Pyros would have wrecked that. But one Pyro with, between the Outlaw, the Defender, and the Lotuses, that worked. And even then, some damage was dealt. That's the thing. It's it's kind of scary. I'm not sure why 400 opted to use Wind Generators here, especially this close. This is very bizarre. Solar Plants make sense. Solar Plants are the ones you use as walls. But Wind Generators, those are way too weak to be viable. I can see putting them back here, like putting a line in them back here and then here. That's usually how people build out. They'll build the lines over on the far corner. Much like the way that Exploit has done, except with Wind Generators. So I don't know why they're using Solar Plants, because usually you'd want to build the Solar Plants over here. Make the wall, put defenses behind it, make it harder to jump in. Which 400 sort of did? I don't know, it's weird. I don't know what they were thinking to use the Wind Gens for. But they do have the Lotus and they have the Defender, so at the very least they are aware that that's where they need to go. Or at least what they need to defend against. And Exploit... Not actually that well. Uh, they're moderately well defended. I mean, a dirtbag wouldn't be able to get in. It would die too soon. So it's not really a concern. They they have their defenses where they need to. Now, a gunship switch or an air switch would be fairly powerful against exploit right now. They don't have very much in the back. On the other hand, against 400. 400 is... I don't know if they're sufficiently paranoid because, I mean, they have jump bots to deal with and they're kind of setting up to deal with those. They have Roach up front. They have, of course, still have the defenses that they already had. They have stuff. An air switch would be a bit of a problem, but I'm guessing that they're, scout they're counting on scouting at first. They don't have any dirtbags around here, though. I'm a bit surprised they haven't set up a couple more dirtbags. Just try to push them in, try to get some sort of position. But it's also only four minutes into the game. Normally, you see this sort of air switch somewhere between six and ten minutes of the game, if it will happen. It has become less popular as of late. Gunship switch is still fairly popular, but even then, I've seen games go pretty far without any factory switch whatsoever. So that will be something to watch for. Like, I don't know if the players are going to expect it. Neither player is really scouting for it. Neither player is looking particularly closely to see if it's going to come up, but I'm sure it'll come up. 
I'd be kind of surprised if it didn't, to be perfectly honest. At any rate, exploit is... Well, they're set up decently well. So right now, exploit appears to be just trying to set up the defenses. That's pretty simple. Consolidating as best they can. I'm really surprised that neither player has been raiding. 400 going straight for the Felon Convict Ball. They are not raiding whatsoever, which is unusual, even for a shield bot player. Probably because of the fact that it's jump bots, and jump bots are kind of tricky to raid. I mean, with pyros being fairly cheap and basically dealing with bandits, I can sort of see where the concern would come in. I mean, it totally makes sense. But at the same time, I kind of expect they do something. You know, set up maybe thugs, or have... Well, I guess there's the gunship switch, so there's that. But say, have a factory switch of some kind, which in this case is gunships, which is exactly what they're doing, and that makes sense. I mean... The jump bots can deal with that with the Archangels, but that's rather dedicated. And at this point, Exploit does not seem to be aware of this coming up. They do have, an, they have a fairly strong economy, not the advantage. They Do they even know that that's there? Let's check what Exploit knows. Exploit knows nothing. They know about this, this area here, which is basically a given. At this point, though, both players are about even. The only difference is actually in overdrive. And... At this point, it's going to be also in harassment as exploit does get rid of this. Okay, that, is that going to go? That's going to go. That that worker's dead. Stardust is being a bit of a problem, but what does the pyro care? The pyro can jump out. It can jump out right now. It probably should too. Yeah, this is this is a really powerful attack. Exploit coming in here, getting an economic advantage by way of harassment, and well, apparently not actually. What the heck? Why is that not burning? That's the heck? Okay, that was really weird. That pyro should have been hitting that lotus the entire time. I guess it was... It wasn't hitting the shields. I have no idea what was going on there. That was the most bizarre thing. That lotus shouldn't be alive. Like, exploit should have probably pulled back. But still, that lotus shouldn't be alive. I don't know. That was a very strange thing to have happened. At this point, though, 400 is way ahead in military. Like, they have their whole shield... They have their shield ball up. They have outlaws coming in. I'm surprised no thugs yet, but... Brawlers as well, because why not? I'm not totally surprised no thugs. I mean, against... Against jump bots, they had to deal with the moderators. It'd be a pain in the butt. I mean, so would the felon. Actually, the felon more so. In fact, I'm a little surprised no placeholders have come up. We just see moderators. Moderator, moderator, moderator. No placeholders, no firewalkers. Okay, I can kind of see why no firewalkers against shield bots. That's difficult. But nothing. That's it. That's all there is. And actually, even firewalkers would be useful. They would be able to get rid of some of the defenses, get rid of some of the economy... But yeah, Exploit coming in with some decent economic harassment, so 400's gonna need to do some good trades here. And these Outlaws are not positioned to do the best of trades, but they will be able to deal some damage. Like, this one up front tanking it, that's... I guess that's something, but it's gonna be tricky. The Defenders are... Okay, yeah, all the Defenders here, not gonna be easy to deal with. Because the problem is the slow effect really doesn't do much against the Defenders. They get to fire off the st their shots well before the uh, the outlaws get in there. I mean, the outlaws can get rid of them, sure, but they get their shots off. Their alpha's been dealt. Like, those, those outlaws were gotten rid of by defenders, basically. And at the same time... Okay, that is really weird. That, what is going on with the animations? There's, there is some odd bug here. I'm not sure what's going on with the animations there, because that Stardust was hitting the moderator, but we didn't see it hitting the moderator. And now these outlaws are basically dead. The moderators are going to just one-shot all of them. Or if not one-shot, then two-shot. There are enough moderators for that not to be a problem. Yeah, two-shot. So these... These outlaws... They didn't really get the best of trades. So at this point, exploits are going to catch up. But they are going pure moderator, which does mean that mass bandits would do just fine. Actually, it would also mean that the brawlers would be fine, too. And mass bandits, that's what 400 is going for. They know the counters. They know what to do. Now, I'm a bit surprised that Exploit has not done any fact switching. I'm also really surprised they're going straight moderators. I they I don't understand what the point of this is. Like, moderator placeholder is a fairly common thing. Like, moderator pyro is actually a bit of a tricky thing I could see using. Nice roach that I could see being used. But I don't really see pure moderator. That doesn't make sense. It would just, it would die. It's about to die, actually. These moderators are basically dead. They don't have the speed on the bandits. If that's the thing, the bandits counter moderators, and especially in the numbers that 400 can get. 400 isn't that far behind exploit. They're basically on par. 
And sure, they're powering brawlers as well, but that just means that the big brawler surprise, that can be that much nastier when it comes in. Especially if it comes around the back here. But yeah, it's just... Oh, okay, no, no, no. That Faraday's a bit of a threat. But still. Bandits coming in, getting rid of the moderators. Brawlers getting rid of the moderators. Exploit coming in with their own gunship plant. Not sure. I don't think they expect anything, but they are coming in with their gunship plant. They are probably going to build up rapiers. Because that's what most people do. The brawlers are a little unusual. They're a bit old school, actually. People used to build brawlers all the time. Then their damage got nerfed and they became a bit harder to use efficiently. They're still good. They're just not the go-to unit. Rapiers are much more commonly used. I assume Exploit will go for that. Probably go for Mass Rapier and then try, I guess, to get rid of the... The, the bandits would go away. I mean, that would get rid of the bandits. Mass Rapier would do the trick. So I guess that alongside the moderators. Pyros are being built. Okay, Pyro and Jack is being built. There we go. That's what I want to see. A little late for it, though. These these bandits are going to be able to tear apart the Pyro. No problem. Tear apart the moderators. Absolutely no problem. So there's, there are enough bandits to get rid of the Pyro. And the moderators are basically dead. And now the brawlers are out. Now Exploit knows what's going on. Yeah, they're fully aware. Of the, they're not really aware of the base, though. It, they have not really much idea what's going on. 400, however, now is going to know exactly what's going on as the brawlers go into the main base. They're going to see the jump bot factory. They're probably going to see that there aren't enough units to really justify just that one factory. Whether or not they're going to be able to con tell that the cheese exists, they don't know it's there. They actually do not have radar coverage of that area, so there is nothing telling sorry, telling 400 that Exploit is over on that north side. However, I think Exploit is probably still going to fall. The Tridents are coming in. They are going to be fairly powerful, but I don't see them getting rid of the brawlers in time. At this point, Exploit is just... They're dropping. They're, they are just dropping in terms of their ability to fight here. I think they'll probably be... No, they're, they're probably dead. Yeah, this... Well, I mean, they were able to build up. They got their economy going pretty well. They had a decent set of defenses and tricks, but... They just got too stuck into mono-spam. That was the problem. They had all mod raiders. They didn't have anything to deal with the bandits that were coming in. They didn't call our scout the air... Like, neither... They neither read it nor scouted it out, so the, just these brawlers tore them to shreds. A few Archangels would have been fine. They would have done the trick. And it's sort of a timing thing. A lot of the time, people will build any anti... Oh, or Razors as well. It's another option. A lot of the time, people will build air around, like I said, 6 to 10 minutes into the game. And that's exactly when 400 did so. They just... They were just stocking up on brawlers for several minutes. Yeah, exploits... Not got much chance here, unfortunately. Valiant effort, though. And they do have the Trident, but the Trident... The Trident's were the only hope. And even then, that's a false one. So, Exploit realizing the Tridents are being countered by Tridents of 400s. That's the game. So, I'm curious to see more matches of Exploit, but we are instead going to... Because, I mean, it's interesting, but... I mean, I want to see how they're doing. I think that they've improved, but... It's still... I still see, like, Mono Spam still a bit of a problem, and... That was the biggest thing, I think, was the mono spam. Everything else, the economy was fine. They, they set that up properly. They had... I was a bit surprised they set, set up solar plants rather than wind generators. That's a minor thing, but that'll get you in a tournament at the high level. Like, the use of wind generators at the front as a wall for 400 didn't make sense to me. But the use of them elsewhere makes total sense. I mean, for wind generators on this map, like 0.8 to 2.5, that is, at least in the top section, a must-use. That is your choice. It's made for you. It's, it's twice as efficient as a solar collector. So exploit didn't even didn't have that. They had metal. They were able to get an economic advantage by way of harassment, but they didn't have energy. That was a huge difference between the two. And also, they just didn't really think through. I don't think a lot of what they were doing. I'm not sure what they were thinking. I'm curious. Anyway, that was that. So we'll move on to another match. This one is going to be between I believe Felthas and Svatopluk. Yeah, that's right. Felthas and Svatopluk on Sands of Time. This is a bit of a longer one. So as usual, get your popcorn and it'll be up in just a moment.